Hi everyone, it's James here from Pro Tools Expert. Uh, to say it has been interface central round here is an understatement. However, we are bringing out the big guns for this one. Finally, after seeing this baby at Music Mesa in Frankfurt, I have got my greasy mitts on an Antelope Audio Goliath HD. This thing is about as close to all things, to all recording people that I've ever seen in an interface. Let's just go over some of the facts and figures. We have Thunderbolt connectivity. We have USB 3 connectivity. We have Pro Tools HD Mini DigiLink connectivity. We have 16 mic pre's. We have four guitar inputs. We have two reamp inputs. We've got line inputs. We've got MADI. We've got ADA Optical. Uh, we've got every kind of clocking and uh, sync source available to mankind. This thing is fully loaded. And I, I even feel like I should go fully loaded because they haven't missed a trick. Everything is on here and it's been done with absolute beauty, finesse and ultimate detail. Uh, so with that said, let's have a look up close and personal around the front and then around the back on the Goliath HD by Antelope Audio. So here we are around the front of the Goliath HD and first on the left we have our two instrument reamp outputs. These are over a TRS quarter inch jack which is pretty normal for this sort of thing. We then have our four guitar high impedance inputs. We then have the rather lovely Goliath HD touch screen and I can show that by going down here and I can actually turn it off if I want to. Not gonna do that. I can go between my monitor inputs, my headphone outputs, my line outputs, all that sort of stuff. It will automatically refer back to the monitor input that I've selected. In this case, we're looking at the Thunderbolt inputs. I can access my talkback from here and where my talkback's routed to, which is very nice. It's just a really nice, simple way to navigate around what's going on on the Goliath HD. A bit further along, we have the 16 gain pots for the 16 built-in mic pre's. They feel really, really nice. As soon as you hit them, you select them, which is really, really nice. They've got a nice dented feel, nice and solid. And as we pass along the front over towards the monitor section, we can see exactly what we're listening to. Monitor outputs, line outputs, headphones, our reamp outputs, and of course we can tweak the level for those as well. The main pot's got a really nice feel to it, and the LEDs are really nice and bright, telling you exactly what's going on. We then have mono check, mute, and the antelope button, which can be configured to pretty much anything you want it to do within the system. We then have our two very loud, very powerful headphone outputs. And also tucked away up here is the tiny little microphone for the talk back. Very, very cool that it's all front panel mounted. So I've used the term connectivity city before. This is more like a connectivity continent, I think. Uh, in the top left, around the back, we've got the power input, we've got word clock and 10M in and out. We've got SPDIF, we have got ADA Optical, we've got AES EBU, I forgot to mention that earlier. We've got the outputs for our monitors, we've got MADI IO, 32 channels of line output over D sub. We then have our Thunderbolt connection, our USB 3 connection, and our HDX DigiLink ports. We then have 16 channels of analog in over two D subs. We then have our insert points for channels one and two. And all the way along the bottom, we have those lovely 16 mic pre's over XLR combi jack inputs. So, as with all of the Antelope audio interfaces I've reviewed in the last 18 months or so, I think. The hardware is great, but it is enhanced so much by their incredible software control panel, which deals with some of the more complex routing and kind of control functions of the hardware. Now, with the Antelope HD, they've done a fantastic job of splitting the two main sections of the control software, that being the actual control mixer page and the routing matrix. And this is by far the most 
complicated routing matrix that I've ever seen on an Antelope audio interface, mainly because we've got so much of everything. We have 16 mic pre's, we have four instrument inputs, we have 16 line inputs, 64 channels of playback over Thunderbolt, 64 channels potentially of USB, not all accessible at the same time it has to be said, 64 channels of MADI I.O. over two different inputs. We have our DigiLink connectivity for 64 channels. ADA optical in, depending on the sample rate you're setting up at the moment, obviously we're at 96K, so it limits it down to 12 channels. AES, SPDIF, our AFX, we have 16 built-in effects channels. And then we've got exactly the same mappable for outputs as well. Now for me, I like to try and keep it simple. I haven't really got too down and dirty with the routing matrix just yet. If I'm using the inbuilt preamps, I'm gonna map those 16 preamps down into Thunderbolt Record 1 through 16. And I can drop those down there like that. At the moment, I'm not gonna do that because of the way I currently have it routed but it is that simple to drag stuff around and create the routing matrix that you want. So by now you can tell I'm quite taken with this thing. Let's ignore the fact that the stats, facts and figures are off the chart for uh, extra dB of gain on the preamps and the converters are better and everything just sounds incredible. It's everything you've ever wanted in 2U. It's incredible. The mic pre's sound amazing. The drums you'll hear in the track are all recorded using uh, 12 of the 16 inbuilt mic pre's. The bass was recorded straight into the guitar input. Uh, guitar was also recorded directly in. We've got all those lovely FPGA effects. We've got 16 channels of them potentially. And they're really easy to use when we root on the way in to create uh, electric guitar sounds, bass sounds, vocal sounds, whatever we like. However, we can also use those FPGA effects in the mix. And that's exactly what I've done here. I've routed from Thunderbolt Play 3 to 18, down here to AFX in 1 through 16, and hence why it says 3 to 18. Now the reason I've started 3 to 18 rather than 1 to 16 is because my main monitor outputs are coming from Thunderbolt 1 and 2, and I don't want to mess with that. What I've then done is rooted out of AFX 1 through 16, and I'm running that back into Thunderbolt Record 3 through 18. So you can see here 1 to 16 on the Thunderbolt Record channels. Now all I have to do inside Pro Tools is just assign hardware inserts across three to 18 of the Thunderbolt outputs, and I can route into my effects processing, which is exactly what I've done here. So if I go over to effects, channel one is kick drum inside, and I'm using the FET or FET A76. We know what that's supposed to sound like. Channel two, I'm actually using a custom preset, two of their own design, EQ and compressor. Three, is the snare drum. Again, I'm using their own EQ, but with the A76 compressor. Up here, we have 16 is actually our bass channel. 13 and 14 are our acoustic channels. So once again, we've been working with Portuguese singer-songwriter Joel Tavares on one of his songs called Salt in Fresh Cuts. Um, this one started off as a stereo pair of mics on guitar and his vocal. And I kind of heard it and went, Mm, I really want to add some funky drums and some cool stuff and some guitar and real bass and kind of turn it into a band arrangement. So that's exactly what we did. So I've eulogized enough about this thing to probably whet your appetites. And you're probably saying, where's the rub? And it's a simple one, really. This level of quality and attention to detail and this level of features doesn't come without a price and it's a fairly big price. However, if you break those prices down to the individual component level, by that I mean 16 mic pre's, uh, ADA optical conversion, uh, Thunderbolt, USB, mini DigiLink, this is a very competitively priced unit. I'll leave the actual number and put it in the um, 
blurb below in the Pro Tools Expert article. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll need to refer back to that. And of course, always refer back to Pro Tools Expert when you're looking at these sort of reviews on YouTube because the details and and all that sort of stuff are there. However, if you are looking to upgrade your HD system, sell your 192s now, sell some of your mic pre's and buy this baby. Trust me, it will sound better. It's spectacular, including in the fact that it's your monitor controller, it's your talkback control, it's your headphone amps. Um, did I mention there are 16 mic pre's on this thing? And they all sound incredible. Uh, I'm having a very hard time not trying to persuade Antelope to take back the Orion 32HD in its place. Not because I don't love the 32HD, but I love the extraness, extraness, really James, um, that the Goliath HD brings to the party. This thing is incredible. So I very much hope you enjoy the track and I hope you've enjoyed this review. My name's James Ivey and I will see you again very soon for some more gear talk. People fall apart, then I'm right back at the start. Just believe me when I say you had my heart. We could have gone so far. A mind is haunted, I'm losing ground. But I'm waking up, you're leaving now. Let's just face up my mind, she's made up. Oh, it's